Hello everybody, my name is Alex Fuchs. I'm a food and beverage photographer from Berlin in Germany and you are watching Easy Food Photography. That's a place where I share all my little tips and tricks around food photography exclusively with you. And today I want to uh, present you my nine favorite cheap uh, food photography tools uh, which I need for my daily routine. So when you are into that, um, lean back, enjoy and stay tuned. The good thing about food photography is that a lot of tools you need uh, for your daily routine are really cheap to have. Tool one is my absolute uh, most used tool at all. And the good thing it's cost nearly nothing. I'm talking about my beloved uh, bounce cards. So um, usually I have three different ones, a silver one, a white one and a black one. You can easily build these uh, bounce cards by yourself. Uh, you know, take a piece of cardboard and then um, um, use, make some white or silver. You can, for silver, you can easily take um, kitchen foil for that. Um, so, um, but um, to be honest, I use, um, for my bounce cards, I use some water repellent materials. So um, I got this silver one is some isolation stuff from the DIY store. Um, and uh, the black and the white ones are uh, some printing foil. I got, uh, I ordered, I purchased through web. So, um, but um, the good thing about all of these three materials is that they are water repellent because um, in food photography, you often have, you know, you are working with water or with liquids or with oil. And um, it's, it's really handy to have your bounce cards um, water repellent because um, yeah, sometimes it gets really messy and greasy as well. And uh, you know, the, the, it's easy to um, make to clean them up. So that's my, my most used tool. And for these bounce cards, I need a clamps. You should have a bunch of them. I have, uh, you know, I have them in different sizes. So um, you can get them easily um, online or in a DIY store. Um, I often use them uh, in combination with my bounce cards. And so it's easy to, you know, to change the, the angle of the bounce cards uh, and to, to bring light uh, into your scene with a silver or with a white card. Or um, you, um, you want to um, flex some light, then you um, are putting um, these, or uh, then you are using these black um, bounce cards or they are not really bounce cards, black flags, um, I would call them, uh, and uh, you know, put them where you want to um, have, uh, or where you want to reduce the light. So, um, and um, these A clamps are really handy because you can use them as stands and stand them right into your scene. So the next thing, which is really important for me, is and um, is a level a bubble level you know you should go for every table or every where you you are starting to build your scene you should use uh, a level and you you should bring that in level because um, often you're working with liquids and when a liquid is uh, you know off level um, it's really you know a pain to fix it in Photoshop and it's so easy to do it uh, right now, um, right on location. So you should use a level. Um, the other thing I'm using a level is, you know, let's um, think you are, you're trying to do a, a flat lay shot or a top shot, then um, you have to bring your camera exactly into level and the table as well, because otherwise you maybe get some um, 
perspective distortions or you don't want to have that in most of the cases so you have to bring your camera in level as well so um, i'm pretty sure everybody um, has a level or owns a level um, if not it's uh, you are maybe a woman and then you have to ask your husband because i think every every man owns a bubble level because um you know it's a really manly tool so um you should go for that the next um the next tool i use really really often is um this beloved brush and you can easily brush things out of your scene or you can um you know brush them around you know these really little like breadcrumbs or like you know like everything you know what which is tiny and you don't want to do it with your fingers because uh, then you probably could destroy your whole scene so um, i'm using that brush really often the next thing is um, you should oops i really love them i bought them for for nearly nothing i don't know maybe two bucks um wooden trip mats they don't have to be wooden um, you can use any kind of trip mats but um, what i really love with these wooden ones is you can really um, put one to another and you can easily change the height of uh, objects so um, often when you want to you know let's say often you have um, the situation that you want to change the height of the things in the background or in the foreground then i put these under my subject and um, i can easily lift things up so um, if uh, i need smaller ones i have a lot of um, ring washers as well in different sizes so that i can you know let's for example i use a lot of ring washers for let's say for for burger shots so if you need to just tilt a little bit you know things and bring them you know to the right position i use these little ring washers to uh, you know to change or to tilt um, little uh, objects in the in the direction i want so um, the next thing to have is um, I usually don't like to make um, advertisement for um, brands, but you know, blue tech, you should have blue tech or something um, similar, like some, some dough or so. You often have to uh, stick things on set so that they um, leave in exact the position you want to have them. So um, I often use a blue tag for that um, to um, hold things in in position so um, yeah you should have that the next thing is um, which I really often use is um, I always have a bunch of different sized funnels with me if you work with any kind of liquids in your set um, you need funnels or you should use funnels because um, when you pour liquids into let's say you you pour some wine into a wine glass and you don't do it with a funnel um, you will have a lot of spillage going on on uh, the upper side of the glass and this often looks really well this looks in every case really not good and it looks really disgusting and so um, i use funnels to whenever um, i have to pour things um, into glasses bottles whatever so um, that's really useful to have and yeah. these things uh, you know you can get a whole bunch i think i bought that four set of funnels in a euro shopper which is uh, you know like a dollar shop in the us for maybe uh, 99 cent when we're talking about food photography we are talking about making massive mess and um, that leads to the next item um, uh, paper kitchen towels i always have a bunch of them um, with me when i do uh, 
food photography because it's always getting messy. The last thing I want to mention is um, this one. It's a remote control for um, my camera. So um, I would really recommend you to put your, um, your to put your camera on a tripod when you're doing food photography. Um, there are a bunch of reasons why you should do that. Um, I have made a video about that. I will um, link that um, to the top. If you're into that, um, feel free to check that video out. Um, but um, that's really a handy tool to have at that because I don't have to stand right on my camera. I can do um, other things. I can, you know, check the composition at um, at uh, the laptop, and uh, you know, I can uh, remotely um, shoot. So um, that's really handy to have, and. Um, why you should uh, put a camera on a tripod. Check out that video. Okay, that's it for today. Hope you found that video useful. If so, feel free to leave me a thumbs up or hit the subscribe button down below or just leave me a comment. Um, I'm really curious um, which kind of tools you are using. So um, feel free to leave me a comment here. Um, if you want to bring your food photography a step further, you could go straight to easyfoodphotography.com and um, subscribe for my free seven day course, um, Shoot Food Like a Pro. Just subscribe at easyfoodphotography.com and the course will start immediately. And the good thing, it's absolutely free. So that's it for, for today. Live long and prosper. Hope to see you next time. See you.